This is a zip file manager. It lets me compress a whole directory of files into a single zip file. And I can also uncompress a zip file to put all the files it contained into a subdirectory. Now, I did all of this in under 200 lines of C-sharp code. What's the secret? In the next few minutes, I'll show you exactly how it's done. I'm Hugh, this is another programming project in a whole series of projects. You can follow the link down below to find all the playlists. Now, the Zip Manager project was suggested by a YouTube viewer in a comment beneath one of my other videos. The good news is that .NET has a number of Zip classes that do most of the hard work for us. If you want to add or extract a file to or from an existing Zip, you can use the methods of the Zip Archive class. And to delete a file, use the Zip Archive Entry class. Now, in this lesson, I'll be using the Zip File class, which is the one that lets me zip up or extract a whole subdirectory of files. And this is really easy to do. It takes just one method, create from directory to zip up a directory. And there's another method, extract to directory, that does the unzipping. The Microsoft documentation shows you all of this, but to run that code, you need to have the file and directory names hard-coded into your program, which is not very useful. To make it more useful, you need to have some kind of user interface that will let let you select subdirectories to zip up and also then select zip files that you want to unzip. Now, in some previous videos, I showed how to create a disk browser or file manager. That is the basis for my zip file manager. If you haven't watched those earlier videos, I recommend that you do so before you try to write your own zip file manager. In this video, I'll show you what I had to do in order to add zip file features to my file browser. Okay, so let's look at the code. Now, the two key methods that I've had to write are called zip folder and unzip. Now, zip folder up here, that begins by testing if the user is trying to zip up the entire disk drive uh, from the root directory, and that's not allowed. Now, you could allow that if you want, but I don't think it's a very sensible thing to do, so I don't allow it. Otherwise, I create a zip file from the directory. Uh, that's I create the zip file with the same name as, name as the folder that's being zipped, but with the extension .zip at the end. So that's created by zip file dot create from directory with the two arguments. That's the path to be zipped and the zip file to be created. And then finally, I show this message. Now the unzip method down here, well, that's even simpler. It extracts the file from the zip file, the selected zip file into a directory, which is here simply uh, a subdirectory um, named extract dir under the current directory and zip file dot uh, extract to directory does the business. The true argument here tells it to overwrite any existing files with the same names. Now, the next two methods after this, that's this one here and this one here, they're a bit more complicated. These are the methods that run when the user selects zip or unzip from the menu on my file manager. When the zip menu item is clicked, this code up here is run. Now this code checks that a tree view node is selected. You can see I get the tree view selected node up here. And since the tree view accurately represents the disk directory structure, all the branches on the tree view shown in my file manager represent subdirectories, well, the full path, that's down here, uh, to the selected tree node, TN, is also the path to the selected subdirectory. And that's the path that I pass as an argument to the uh, zip folder method. Before I do that, a message box asks for confirmation uh, that the action should go ahead, that the directory should be zipped. Now let's have a look at this method down here. 
Now, this one is the one that is run when I select unzip from the menu. Much of the code is aimed at getting the path to the selected file. So you can see the um, selected file path method here. If I just uh, peek the definition in Visual Studio, you can see the code. Well, that uh, helps to get the, the, the path that I need. Now, close that down. Now I get the file extension and I need to check that this is a zip file. So it has to have the extension .zip. As you can see, that's tested down here. And I show various messages and prompt you when the file is about to be unzipped. Apart from all that, the real business is done here when I call unzip. And also here, add dirs, add dirs. Um, well, what's that for? Well, you may remember that when I unzip a file, I create a new directory. Let me just go to unzip to remind you of that. So here we are. I create this directory, extract dir. That's where I extract all the files from the zip file that I'm unzipping, and I put them all into this directory under the current subdirectory. So when I call add dirs down here, this rebuilds the directory structure that's shown in the, the file manager under the current node. So the newly created directory is added to the tree view in the file browser. So let's see a quick demo of this. So here I am in, well, it's the music directory under my test directory here. So I select that directory and click zip selected directory. I'm prompted. Do I really want to do it? It says, yes, it's done it. And it's put it in the test directory up here. Uh, let's see that. And there's the zip file that it's been created. Now, if I want to unzip it, I select the file. And of course, this time, select unzip selected file. Again, go through some confirmation prompts. And you can see that it's already added the uh, directory into which the files have been extracted, extract dir, and there they are. And finally, I'm going to scroll down all my code and you can pause the video if necessary to check any code that you might have missed during this tutorial. So this is the whole lot. Um, bear in mind that there's very little error checking in this code. In a finished application, you'd need to deal with problems such as trying to zip folders to which you don't have full access or unzip files to an invalid location and so on. Uh, you'd probably also want to add dialogues to prompt for file or directory names. The code here only demonstrates the, the core functionality, that is how to browse a disk unzip or unzip directories of files, and you would need to do all that testing and make it just generally more user-friendly and more robust in a finished application. There is, of course, much more you could do to extend this project. Using the three .NET zip classes that I mentioned earlier, that's zip file, zip archive, and zip archive entry, you can program the ability to add, delete, or open files in a zip archive. Most of the functionality of these three classes is straightforward to use. You just have to integrate them into a file browsing application, as I showed in this video. Okay, so that's it for today. Remember, I have a ton of programming projects in C Sharp, Java, Object Pascal, and other languages. And the easiest way to find them is to go to my channel and browse through the playlists. Now, thanks for watching, and to be alerted when I upload new videos, be sure to subscribe and click that bell, and I'll see you again soon.